we can use the Taylor series in order to expand the continuous function into the infinite series. And at the same time, we can estimate the sum of the infinite series using the function. So in order to do this, we need to know the Taylor series. So let's say we're given a series in this form. So the summation of n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorials. If I write down a couple of first terms, it's going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 over t factorials plus 1 over 3 factorials plus and so on. So what I want is I would like to know what is its sum. So we know that the series is conversion. So I would like to know what is the sum of all of these infinite terms. In order to do this, what I would like to do is I would like to expand the f of x is equal to the e in, in the power of x into the Maclaurin series, into the Taylor series when a is equal to the 0. So in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to write this as f of 0 plus f prime of 0 multiplied to the x plus f t prime of 0 multiplied to the x square plus divided to the two factorials f3 prime of 0 x cubed divided to the three factorials and so on. So please note that if f of x is equal to the e in a pair of x then f first derivative of this function, second derivative of this function, or any derivative of this function is equal to the e in the power of x. So when we need to find the first derivative of the function at the point 0, or the second derivative of the function at the point 0, and so on, we just need to evaluate e in the power of 0, which is equal to the 1. So here in this formula, when we expand the e in the power of x into the Taylor series, all of these terms are equal to the 1. So basically we can write down e in the power of x as 1 plus x plus x square over t factorials plus x cube over 3 factorials plus x4 divided to the 4 factorials and so on. So in <coughs> actually this power series is very similar to this series except we don't have the axis. Right? Or actually, we have the x to be equal to the 1 here in this series. Basically, if I would substitute e in the power of 1 to here, so basically if I substitute x to be equal to the 1 in the left-hand side and in the right-hand side, I would have that e is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 over t factorials plus 1 over 3 factorials plus 1 over 4 factorials plus and so on which is actually the same as the series, and actually this is equal to the e. So using the Taylor series, or using the expansion of e in the power of x, we've just estimated the sum of the infinite series. So <clears throat> let's consider another example. So let's say we're given the other series in this form. So 1 minus 1 over t plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5 and so on. So in general we can write down this in a compact form using the summation n from 0 to infinity, right? So minus 1 in a pair of n plus 1 multiplied to the 1 divided to the n. Indeed, if you write down a couple of first terms of the series by substituting n to be equal to the 0, 1, t, and so on, you can get all the terms here. So this series is very similar to the harmonic series, right? Uh, but actually it's alternating harmonic series. So we know that this series is converging, right? Because if I would write here the n to be equal to the 1 over n, then I could write the series and the form n from 0 to infinity minus 1 in the pair of n plus 1 dn. So we know that any alternating series which is written in this form is convergent if it satisfies the following t conditions. So the first condition is that it is should be um, it should be a decreasing series, right? Bn. And the limit of the Bn should be equal to the 
zero when n goes to infinity. So both of the condition works for this bn. So that is why the series is converging. So what I would like to know is, I would like to know what is the sum of all of these infinite terms. In order to do this, I would like to figure out some function so that its expansion, Taylor expansion, will look like really similar to this one. For example, let's take the function f of x to be equal to ln of 1 plus x. Okay, so I would like to expand this in the Taylor series in the form f of 0 plus f prime of 0 multiplied as x plus f t prime of 0 multiplied as x squared divided as t plus f3 prime of 0 divided as 3 factorials multiplied as x cubed plus and so on. So in order to evaluate the coefficients of the of this infinite polynomial, we need to just <coughs> find the derivatives of this function. So if f of x is equal to ln of 1 plus x, then when x is equal to the 0, it's going to be equal to the ln of 1, which is 0. So the first derivative of this function, it's going to be 1 over 1 plus x, or simply we can write this as 1 plus x in the power of minus 1. So when x is equal to the 0, it's going to be equal to 1. So actually this term is equal to the 1, this term is equal to the 0. So in order to find this term here, we need to find the second derivative of this function. So second derivative of this function is going to be minus 1 comes down, 1 plus x in the pair of minus t, and we need to evaluate this when x is equal to the 0, and actually it's going to be minus 1. So the second derivative here is also going to be minus 1. So if I would like to estimate, eliminate, uh, estimate this term, it's going to be the third derivative of this function, and we need to estimate this when x is equal to the 0, right? Or basically, let's find the third derivative of the function. It's going to be minus plus 2, right? Because minus 2 comes down here. And 1 plus x and the power of minus 3. And we need to evaluate this when x is equal to the 0, it's going to be t. So this value here is t. And so on. So let me simplify the terms and write this down. So it's going to be 1 multiplied to the x, right? Plus or minus x squared over t then plus x cubed over 3, right? Because t divided to the 3 factorials is actually, is actually equal to the 3. And the next term is, say, so in order to do this, we need to take the fourth derivative of this function. It's going to be minus 6, 1 plus x in the power of minus 4, right? If you evaluate this, x is equal to the 0, it's going to be minus 6. If you would substitute here, it would be minus 6 divided to the 4 factorials, right? Which is minus 1 over 4 multiply this x4, and so on. So actually, we wrote down ln of 1 plus x in terms of the Taylor series, and it is equal to the x minus x squared over t plus x cubed over 3 factorials, or 3, sorry, minus x4 over 4. So probably the next term is going to be x5 over 5, and so on. So this Taylor expansion of this function is very similar to this series, which we wanted to find, right? So what we wanted to do is, we would like to know what is the 1 minus 1 over t, plus 1 over 3, minus 1 over 4, plus 1 over 5, and so on, right? And this is possible to know what is its sum by substituting x to be equal to the 1 to here, right? So indeed, if you would substitute x to be equal to the 1, you would get 1 minus 1 over t, plus 1 cubed over 3, minus 1 in the power of 4 over 4, plus 1 over 5, and so on, right? Exactly the same thing which we wanted to find, right? So actually, this is equal to the ln of 1 plus 1, or ln of t. So it appears sum of the alternating harmonic series is equal to ln of t. So let's continue and evaluate the sum of the following term, following series. Another example is when we would like to estimate the sum of this series, pi squared over t factorials, 
plus pi 4 over 4 factorials minus pi 6 over 6 factorials so probably the next term is pi 8 divided as 8 factorials and so on so in order to estimate the sum we would like to use the same idea as in the previous examples so we would like to figure out a function so that its Taylor expansion would will be really similar to this one okay so let's take our function is cosine of x. So it's Taylor series, it's going to be f of 0 plus f prime of 0 multiplied to the x plus f t primes of the 0 multiplied to the x squared divided to the t plus f third derivative at the 0 divided to the 3 factorials x cubed plus f fourth derivative at the 0 divided to the 4 factorials x4 and so on. So let us find a couple of first terms of the series. So f of x is equal to cosine of x. When x is equal to the 0, it's going to be f of 0, which is equal to the 1. So this term is equal to the 1. So in order to find this term, we need to find the derivative of this function. It's going to be minus sine of x. When x is equal to the 0, this is equal to the 0. So that is why this term is equal to the 0. So in order to find this term, we need to find the second derivative of the function. It's going to be minus cosine of x. When x is equal to the 0, it's going to be minus cosine of 0, which is minus 1. So this term is equal to the minus 1. In order to find this term, we need to find one more time the derivative. It's going to be the third derivative of the function. It is equal to the minus or plus sine of x. When x is equal to the 0, this is equal to the 0. Right? So this term is equal to the 0. And if I find the fourth derivative of the function, it's going to be a plus cosine of x now, right? When x is equal to the 0, this is equal to the 1 again. So this is equal to the 1. So by substituting, by simplifying the terms, we can write down the cosine of x in terms of the Taylor series would be 1 minus x squared over t plus x4 over 4 factorials minus x6 divided to the 6 factorials plus x8 divided to the 8 factorials and so on. So what we want to define is 1 minus pi square over t plus pi 4 over 4 factorials minus pi 6 over 6 factorials plus pi 8 over 8 factorials and so on. So when you look to this Taylor expansion of the cosine and to the series, you see that they are similar, right? So actually, if I, if I substitute it here instead of x pi, right, cosine of pi, we would get this term. So exactly the series, right? It would be 1 minus pi square over t plus pi 4 over 4 factorials minus pi 6 over 6 factorials plus pi 8 over 8 factorials, and so on, right? And actually, the sum of this infinite series is equal to the cosine of pi, which is minus 1. So we can use the Taylor series in order to know what is the sum of infinite series.